so fucked up. Love and Pop was released in 1998 and is the first live-action feature film of Hideki Anno, not counting his Ultraman fan film in which he himself played Ultraman. Anno is famous or infamous for his series Neon Genesis Evangelion, and I'd be lying if I said that that wasn't the reason why I watched this. After all, if something doesn't have giant robots in it, then I'm usually not entertained by it. The film is adapted from the novel Topaz 2, which is the sequel to Topaz 1. Topaz 2 is also the basis for another film called Tokyo Decadence, which was directed by the author himself, interestingly enough. That very same author also wrote the book that would become the movie Audition, which there may or may not be a video about in the future. The movie is about our typical Japanese girl, Hiromi, and her typical Japanese schoolgirl friends. They also have names, but none of them are that important for me to remember them. As they enter into the world of compensation dating. Being exactly what it sounds like, compensation dating involves older men paying young girls to spend time with them. It's kind of like a more innocent version of prostitution, although that's not to say it doesn't get to weird, creepy, and sexual levels. Apparently this was a big issue in Japan, and the movie doesn't shy away from presenting just how gross and icky this whole concept is. Interestingly enough, this movie was filmed entirely on digital cameras, which was really off-putting to me at first. But as the movie goes on, you start to realize that there's a reason for this. The movie is told from the point of view of Hiromi, who acquires a little digital camera of her own early on in the film. What initially seems like a cheap way to shoot a movie acts as our point of view for Hiromi. A lot of the camera work feels like a child playing with a camera for the first time, and this is really representative of the main character and Hideki Anno just fucking around with the camera for the first time. The aspect ratio and perspective constantly change along with the character's motions, and a lot of the camera shots and angles seem downright voyeuristic. And while this is neat, there are points where it does feel like too much. Not to say that it isn't well executed, but sometimes it feels like you've gotten the point and then they just keep on going with the experimental scene that they've been doing. The first 20 to 30 minutes of this movie are a drag. It's not that absolutely nothing happens, it's just repetitive. Once the movie starts to focus in on Hiromi alone, is when it starts to pick up. It's for that first portion of the movie that Hiromi is still hanging around with her friends and they're all going on group dates with lonely, creepy, older Japanese salarymen. As the movie goes along and Hiromi starts going on these dates alone, they start to get creepier and weirder and more dangerous. They change from pathetically creepy to disturbingly creepy. And this only ramps up until the climax of the film. A big theme of this movie is youth. All the young schoolgirls are casually throwing away their youth. They feel pressured to look or act older than they really are. It's this pressure that leads them into compensation dating. On the reverse side, we have the men who pay them. They've fetishized and perverted this idea of youth to an unhealthy degree. A lot of them act much younger than they really are, or covet things that symbolize youth, like a stuffed bear, or at least I think that's what it is. It is pixelized a lot for some reason. Or even the chewed up grapes of high school girls. By extension, they are treating the girls as commodities, buying what they want from them and not really viewing them as people. And this kind of goes both ways, as the girls are also using these men for money as a source of revenue or income. I can't say that I'd really recommend this movie to your average Evangelion fan. If you're here for any of the sci-fi elements or waifu wars that made Ava popular, there's a good chance you'll be disappointed. But the movie is very effective in presenting its themes. If you're looking for a slow-moving look at Japanese society, then this is a good place to start. For a movie similar in tone, style, and content, check out my review of Noriko's Dinner Party. Mm -hmm.